Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. What do we got here? These are some miniature Marks toy guns that uh, I acquired in Louisiana, just outside of New Orleans. Whoa, the guy who owned these must have had really small hands. <laughs> <laughs> I have a small display of miniature guns from the Marks Company. I acquired these toy guns from my cousin in New Orleans, and after I had them framed up, they were put in my home office where I've been enjoying them, but time to move on to something else. I would like to get about $1,200 for the guns. If I can sell the guns today, I'll be using the money to do some more redecorating in my office. This is pretty cool, man. Lewis Marks & Co. You know, really, really interesting guy, you know, typical American dream story. Lewis Marks partnered with his brother, um, started off in the 19-teens, and, you know, he had a really great idea. Kids are kind of savages, and I'm gonna make really cheap toys that we, parents can replace, because prior to him, like, most toys are really expensive. Yep. He kind of realized that making inexpensive, cheap toys for kids was a good idea because they were gonna break them, they were gonna lose them, and it was repeat business over and over again. This guy literally made everything. I mean, they called him the Henry Ford of toys. Mm -hmm. Toy trains, dollhouses, model cars, um, just about any kind of toy you could think of, he made them. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't surprise me that he made these little guns like this. I believe there's still Mark's toys today in some capacity, but I know it was 1970 something he sold to Quaker Oats for 52 million. I mean, I've never seen ones that are this small. It's kind of funny, it looks like something that used to be in a cereal box. Or something. I know, <laughs> I know, they're really tiny. So what are you looking to get out of them? You know, I was thinking around $1,200. Here's my dilemma. Um, Mark's Toys made millions of different things. Mm -hmm. Some of it's collectible, some of it's not. Some of it was really high quality, some of it was really cheap. These I have no idea about. Do you mind if I have a friend of mine come take a look at them? Sure, I'd like that. Yeah. Okay, um, why don't you hang out, take a look around, I'll be right back, okay? okay. I'm really hoping the expert tells me they're worth at least what I'm asking, or maybe even more. You said you had some guns. I didn't think you had tiny toy guns. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you seen these before? Because I have. <laughs> yeah, um, Marks, I mean, obviously was known, you know, big in being able to take other people's ideas and make them cheaper. And it showed throughout the years, because as they evolved as a company, they did a lot of things that were really unique. One of those things that they did was getting into the world of toy guns and stuff like that because it didn't take up a ton of space. This is more of one of those retail five and dime type of display where you would have it, either it would have been countertop or hung on the wall. And then, you know, you came up and you're like, can I get one of those? They would have pulled that gun off, gave it to you at the counter. Now, something unique that I see on here is this tag. That's actually a salesman sample tag. This tells me this was like a traveling display that was maybe used by a salesman rather than something that would actually have been a retail point. Yeah, um, you know how it is with Marks. I mean, they have really, really collectible stuff and they have stuff that's not. You yeah. Know. Marks toys have a huge collector base because you have people who collect Marks toys, you have people that collect guns, you have people that collect toys from time periods. So this really displays well, would look great in someone's collection. So what do you think it's worth? So the guns individually, I've seen them sell on that $40 to $60 range, depending on condition, just the independent guns by itself. Um, the plastics all look really nice, especially the whites. The whites don't look really yellowed, and that's usually a key indicator of something that maybe got a lot of uh, heat or uh, uh, sun damage. In this case, it doesn't look like it did. The salesman sample is really unique because they just don't come up often on the market, and that's an item that I would expect you would see, you know, somewhere between six and seven hundred dollars of value just in that piece by wow. itself. Yeah. Okay. So all together, what do you think? You know, the whole set. I think that you'd have no problem getting fifteen hundred bucks for it. Great. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you coming down. All right, man. Have a good day. Good luck. Okay. So, um, I mean, we're not very far off. Um, I'd pay about nine hundred bucks. Um. Uh, I could probably meet you halfway, 1100 I'll go 1000 Um, I could do 1000 Cool. Uh, there's a guy right over there that'll write you up. Thanks. It was a tough negotiation. He really stuck to his guns, but I'm $1,000 richer today.